Up close, I'm Diana Williams. Legalizing same-sex marriage, again, a hot topic both in our area and all around the country. Washington state is now well on its way to becoming the seventh state to legalize same-sex marriage, along with New York, Connecticut, Iowa, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, and the District of Columbia. New Jersey is taking up the matter, but how it will go about it is now the issue. Governor Christie wants voters to decide on a gay marriage in a, re on gay marriage in a referendum, while legislative leaders are preparing to pass a bill that Governor Christie says he's not going to sign. So where does that leave legislators? And is a referendum the best way to decide such a, a hot topic? Joining us now, Evan Wolfson. He's president and founder of Freedom to Marry. He supports legislative action to legalize same-sex marriage. And also here with us once again this morning, Brian Brown with the National Organization for Marriage. This group successfully passed referendums to ban same-sex marriage in Maine and California. So good to have you both good on to the be program. With you. Good Thanks to have for you back me. again, Brian. Um, I want to start a little bit with some of the nuts and bolts on this um, because you don't have a ref referendum happen just with a snap of your finger, right? Somebody has to plan it, you have to get signatures, all of that. Is there a process right now underway in the state of New Jersey to, to get a referendum going? Well, the reason that this is happening in New Jersey through legislative action is because in most of the states that have direct initiative and referenda, um, the people have already voted to protect marriage as the union of a man and a woman. Every single state that's had a vote, uh, the people have voted to protect marriage. New Jersey does not have direct initiative and referenda. You're talking so, about a constitutional amendment on their state constitution. Correct. In, in Maine, uh, the people voted. It wasn't a constitutional amendment. They repealed same-sex marriage. But in New Jersey, there is no direct initiative and referendum. So the people can't just gather signatures and then put this to a vote. That's part of the reason why proponents of same-sex marriage are focusing on states like New Jersey, because there isn't direct initiative and referendum. But the legislature... Well, help me to understand that, because I, I, I'm a little confused here. In New Jersey, you can have a referendum. You just need to get petitions. You know, the last not time direct, that, not, not direct. direct. It has to go through the legislature. And the last time that New Jersey's governor said, you know what, let's throw this something to the people and let the people decide was in 1915 when the question of whether women should have the right to vote instead of having the legislature resolve that was put on the ballot. And guess what? The men voted it down. So in New Jersey, we understand that you don't put basic rights, basic freedoms up to a vote. This is really kind of a non-starter. It was basically Governor Christie's way of getting this off his desk, getting this away from him. So, and the process is now going to just keep going forward, and we're going to bring this down. So this what I'm hearing, was this just a politically savvy move by the governor so he didn't have to deal with it? No, that's totally wrong. In, in America, when we have divisive and emotional issues that we fundamentally disagree on, we have a public debate. We debate uh, these these issues we do so civilly we don't attack each other personally unfortunately in the same-sex marriage debate we've seen uh, our donors and supporters attacked and we condemn this on both sides we have a civil debate we argue this and then the people go to the ballot box and vote what Evan is saying is basically that democracy doesn't count here we decide if it's a civil rights issue and when Evan decides it's a civil rights issue the people don't get a vote so he's taking it off the table he's saying he's saying he doesn't want the people to vote because he knows when Whenever the people have voted, they voted to protect traditional marriage. Well, actually, I disagree with Mr. Brown's explanation of how the United States is supposed to function. Here in the United States, we actually believe there are basic rights, basic freedoms that are protected for everybody under the Constitution. And it's exactly what we don't do is have a big debate about whether you should have freedom of religion or whether I should have freedom of speech or whether you should have the freedom to marry. We're all Americans. We're all entitled to basic rights and protections, and we don't put that up to an up or down vote. But all of us but agree on that issue. We agree that we have civil rights. The question is whether there's a civil right to redefine marriage, and we disagree on okay, that. Let well, me ask you this, though. There's a Quinnipi Quinnipiac poll that shows that people in New Jersey support gay marriage, 52% to 42%. So if you were to put this out to the people and have them vote, well, what but, would happen? But see, in, 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 in representative government and in New Jersey system, as I described earlier, uh, talking about 1915 and so on, the people have voted. The people elected legislators. They elected legislators to do their job. If the legislators don't do their job, the people can vote them out. Governor Christie was elected by the people. Governor Christie can be reelected or voted out. So we, we elect our representatives to do something. They're not just there to sit while we take people's individual rights and the rights of a minority and personal protections and put them up to a show of hands. That's just not the way our country best protects the freedom of religion of all of us, the freedom of speech of all of us, and the freedom to marry. The freedom to marry is a very important, protected, important personal choice 
and fundamental protected legal right. It is wrong for people to be voting as, for example, Congressman John Lewis said when he came to New Jersey and said, if my rights as, as a civil rights icon in back in the day had been put up to a vote, I wouldn't have my rights and I wouldn't be sitting in Congress. So we don't just throw everything up to a vote. Bru <laughs> the, the, <laughs> You're ready for I, me I to know, respond. I'm ready for you. Let, <laughs> let me let you respond, then I'll ask my next question. Well, uh, the fact of the matter is that I think it is completely wrong and absurd to, to claim that the majority of Americans are the equivalent of people who opposed interracial marriage and are somehow the KKK because they voted to protect marriage as the union of a man and a woman. It, you are comparing apples to oranges. And while... Uh, Evan brings up uh, Congressman Lewis, uh, Dr. Walter Fauntroy, who organized Dr. King's March on Washington, first congressman uh, in Washington, D.C., actually supports the notion that people should vote on this. And African-American leader after African-American leader has said, this is a false analogy. Don't compare our struggle to what we went through in slavery and civil rights to the same thing as redefining marriage. And look, if you look at where African Americans vote on this issue, you're somewhere around 70% opposition to same-sex well, marriage in states. So do not use them to redefine marriage. Well, let me uh, respond. If you, well, you uh, the first thing I want to say, I mean, there, it were, there were so many inaccuracies in that statement because it's a blend of the usual talking points that it's really kind of hard to respond. But let me just take this question of redefining marriage because Mr. Brown likes to say that all the time. Nobody's talking about redefining marriage. When gay people share in the freedom to marry, it doesn't change your marriage, it doesn't change your marriage, it doesn't change my marriage. Gay people are participating who, because we're in love, we're in committed relationships, dreaming of a life together with somebody, building a life together, doing the work of marriage. This is not about redefining. Marriage is not defined by who's denied it. Marriage is defined by commitment and love respected under the law. And when the government issues civil marriage licenses, which is what we're talking about here, the government issuance of legal marriage licenses, government doesn't do bar mitzvah licenses, doesn't do communion licenses, but it does issue legal marriage licenses because marriage is a legal bond under the law. This is not about what, what churches have to do. It's not about what, what you believe. It's not about how you have your marriage. You're entitled to your marriage. You're entitled to respect. But I'm entitled to respect for my marriage, too. And as Americans, we're all entitled to the same basic freedoms and protections and respect. And that's what New Jersey's legislature is about to vote on under the leadership of Assembly Speaker Sheila Oliver, who's also African-American, uh, Mayor Cory Booker, who's also African-American, have all spoken out and said, let's do the right thing in New Jersey, just as we did here in New York. Are your hands tied, essentially, or your organizations and your movement tied when a governor is clearly opposed to gay marriage? I mean, here in New York State, you had a governor who supported it, and it passed here. I mean, unless you have governors that support it, it's not likely going well, to pass through uh, any state. Uh, look, obviously, it would be easier if Governor Christie would do the right thing for all New Jersey families and do what the majority in New Jersey wants, according to the polls. But he has said he's going to veto it. I take him at his word. The legislators have said they're going to move forward and vote on this. That's their job. We hope they will vote. And then we will work to override Governor Christie, as we did in Vermont when Vermont's governor vetoed the marriage bill and we worked hard and people spoke out and community uh, constituents and, and voices and families were heard and the legislature so overrode the veto. that's the avenue that you will use. Absolutely. And, and the avenue you will use in New Jersey. Well, there's, there's no question there are not the votes for an override in New Jersey. It's just not going to happen. So when Evan talks about a non-starter, it's a non-starter to say that you're going to override the veto. They're doing this as a, as a political ploy. It's not going to go any further. But I want to talk to the substance of the issue that, that Evan raised up. Uh, Look, it is wrong to say that if you change the definition of marriage, it only affects Evan or only affects same-sex couples. It affects everyone. When we've seen what happens in Massachusetts, where Catholic Charities Adoption Agency, after passage of same-sex marriage, is told that it's discriminating because it can only adopt children to same-sex couples according to its religious beliefs. The state comes in and says now, because of same-sex marriage, that is discrimination. You can no longer adopt children at all. When schools change what our children are taught and say that I am a bigot and people that support marriage as the union of a man and a woman are bigots because they're discriminating. That is a fundamental change in law and policy. Marriage is something. Marriage is the union of a man and a woman. See, let let no. me ask you, and I'll let you respond. Have you Thanks. seen any impact in New York? 
since uh, oh, well, it's, it's very recent, but clearly there's been impact. There's been the impact on justices of the peace who don't want to, because of their religious beliefs, can't uh, say that they're going to marry a same-sex couple. Governor Cuomo said no religious exemption for them. You will lose your job. That is a direct impact. It is starting to change what is taught in the schools. It is a fundamental lie that there is no impact when you take an institution that has lasted thousands of years that the majority of people believe is something unique and special change it in law and then say no there's no effect okay, See, Evan. once again these are the torrent of talking points but your question goes right to the point and it, it was very clear there was no answer the, t the talking point is this is going to change the everything. The rights of justices of the peace is and no answer. Actually, let's I, let Evan, you, you had your I point there, Brian. Let's let Evan say it. So I will. you asked the question, what's happened in New York that all these things that are so terrible that everything, the sky's going to fall and Massachusetts is going to be swept into the ocean, Canada is going to melt away, Argentina, all these places that have ended marriage. So the only example Mr. Brown can talk about is that people who receive government salaries to serve all the people in New York who take an oath to serve the people of New York in the performance of their jobs will be told they have to perform their jobs. That's, that's the only example he can give. And by the way, that has nothing to do with marriage. That's about non-discrimination law. In America, we have very settled principles that when you operate in the public sphere, when you take a government job, when you say as a government clerk or a justice of the peace or somebody drawing a government salary that you're going to serve all New Yorkers, you have to serve all New Yorkers. Okay. I'm going to have to end it here because we're out of time, but what a great debate. You two are great speakers for both sides. Uh, great having you both on this program this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. When we come back